Hey guys, a quick rundown on an experiment that I've been doing lately. Now, those of you who have been into knives for a little while will often be familiar with the concept of behind the edge thickness. What I mean by behind the edge thickness is this is the profile. Like if you looked down a flat ground knife, such as this Spyderco Manix 2, the shape that you would see is something like this, much smaller and thinner, of course. And a hollow ground knife will actually have these concave scoops out of it. So if you looked down something like a buck 110, then the profile is a hollow grind. Some of the performance characteristics will come from the grind, such as that if you're doing full thickness cuts through something like an apple, they'll slide very easily through a hollow grind until they get up to this shoulder, and then they'll sort of bind up. And that's something that I haven't been particularly a big fan of. And you'll also be familiar with, if you guys have been into knives for a while, the fact that a flat grind doesn't have that limitation, but then at the same time, if you look at the two with these fixed behind the edge thicknesses, you can see that for the first portion of the blade, which does the majority of slicing tasks, the hollow grind is thinner and will perform more admirably. But that's not the whole story, right? We know that what makes for a lot of cutting efficiency is what your behind the edge thickness is. I don't know what these units are, maybe we could call them tenths of a millimeter or something like that, but you can see clearly that there's four squares, four units across from one corner of the edge to the other on this knife, and four units across from one corner of the edge to the other. And much of your felt slicing efficiency in a knife actually depends on this thickness right here. Why is that? Well. Even if you change the angle, even if you make the angle a little more acute or a little bit more obtuse, this will have a significant effect because whatever materials you cut with a knife, they have to go from being bonded and joined together to being pushed out at least this amount of distance to begin moving up the more narrow taper of the knife. That creates a lot of compression right here and sometimes you are not even experiencing a lack of efficiency from the edge being dull or not sharp so much as you can feel the effect when a knife is too fat behind the edge. It slows things down. This is the reason that many people will point out that most pocket knives won't cut up an apple as nicely as, say, a, even a dull kitchen knife because a kitchen knife will usually have a low overall thickness, which has an effect, and usually will have a very low behind the edge thickness. Why am I talking to you about this today? Well, I had a bit of an epiphany, and the epiphany was this. Say you wanted this to be not not four units across, but two, half the behind the edge thickness. Well, in this flat ground knife, you need to take it in one unit here and one unit here. So as I draw this off, this is all the metal that you would need to remove. And if you've got a belt sander, you could do that quite efficiently efficiently, although you would mess up the heat treatment of the knife and you would lose some edge retention unless you had a lubricated style of a belt sander. So in order to make this knife cut significantly more efficiently, you have this volume of metal to remove across the entire body of the knife. Anyone who's done flat stone sharpening and done something as simple as a reprofiling of an edge to a more acute angle will know that is a significant amount of work to remove that metal. That would be hours of grinding at a stone, depending on what these thicknesses actually are. However, you would arrive at a much narrower, much smaller behind the edge thickness when you're done. Sorry for the imprecision of my Sharpie drawing here. Let's talk about hollow grind though. If you want to take a hollow grind and make it thinner behind the edge, do you have control over that? Well, you can do the same thing. You could lay this alongside a sharpening stone and take off all this material. You could do the same thing to a hollow ground knife. You could come in one unit here and one unit here and here. And then let me show you how much metal you'd have to remove to make this half the thickness behind the edge that it was. Just making sure to line up my dots correctly here, sorry. Oh, 
that amount of metal right there. Look at the difference in volume of metal removed if you're going to do a hand reprofiling that gets you to a smaller behind the edge thickness. So this thought occurred to me like, oh, what if I got a hollow ground knife and just laid it on the stone and took the two shoulders off of the blade and then maybe polished it up to a mirror and see how it cuts with this new behind the edge thickness. And I was like, well, it'd be worth it on a budget knife because not only would that be a doable amount of work to do with just a sharpening stone on a bench top, but additionally, it would solve my main complaint with hollow grind in that it would remove these shoulders, which stuff gets bound up on really easily, and move it every sharpening toward being more like a flat ground knife, but you would still get the benefit of this little hollow in here. So I decided to embark upon this experiment with a classic lightweight buck 110. And it took a little bit of time because this had quite a substantial behind the edge thickness initially. But if you look at this, I've mirrored the portions of the edge that I took off on the sharpening stone and you can see them there. So it was a substantial amount of metal still, but nothing even close to what you would remove from a flat ground knife to bring it to a smaller behind the edge thickness. This buck is now at less than five thousandths of an inch behind the edge after just about an hour of work doing this to it. And I just put a dual grit edge on it and it sharpened to 66 grams on a best machine going very, very slow. I'll play that clip for you in real time and you can take a look at it. Experimental knife, buck 110. I've laid it flat on the stone, mirror polished it up to a quarter micron and ground off the shoulder off of the edge bevel and the grind shoulder. I basically zero ground most of it other than the very tip and it's got a dual grit micro bevel on it. Oops, let me move the camera so I can reach around here. Strapped on mother's mag polish. Hair whittling sharp. I have to go really, really slow reading to try to make sure we're really accurate here. Sixty-six. Sixty-six grams best. <sighs> Dual grit micro bevel. It's three thousand grit on this side. Four hundred grit CBN on the other. That's gonna be sharp. Anyway, you can see this mirror polish isn't perfect and I haven't tried to get it perfect. I just wanted a way that the video could differentiate which steel I have actually removed easily. I'm not aware of anyone who's doing this. So if you know of anybody, you can let me know down in the comments. But at the moment, I've taken to calling this a follow grind. With a nod to the fact that the knife started out as a hollow grind but with each sharpening, it will move closer and closer to a full flat grind. There's a variety of things that you could call it or use to designate this, but this is what I'm going to use for the time being until I hear of something better or decide something else, because I want to be able to differentiate when I've done this to a knife and it's been part of this experiment set. It's worth noting that it's basically the same grind and the same sharpening method that you would do for a straight razor. And it that's perhaps why the sharpness rating is so close to that of a straight razor. However, um, I have done a micro bevel on this at about 15 degrees per side and put a dual grit edge on it. 
it so it is different than anything you would ever put on a straight razor presumably because in a straight razor you'd be laying the blade flat to the stone and stropping it flat to the stone and leaving that whatever it is like 12 degrees per or six degrees per side um 12 degrees inclusive edge there where i have actually micro beveled this with a like four and a half thousandths of an inch 400 grit cbn on this side 3000 grit suhira serax dual grit edge on this buck 110 anyway i'll keep you posted in future videos of how this works but i would encourage you guys uh, i think this could be fairly revolutionary find yourself one of your budget hollow ground knives lay it flat on the stone get brave brave enough to mess up the way it looks a little bit at least temporarily and carve off these shoulders and let me know what you think i think this could actually change the way that we sharpen anyway there's a link on screen for another one of my videos for all the rest of you i'll say peace out from the home slice you guys take care bye